Okay, so let's look at the last part of uh, question 5, which is relatively done okay. Some of you, well done, really, right? Some are okay, not as bad as the other parts. Of course, there are still a few of you who are not so familiar with natural selection. Okay, so for the evolution, right, of course, it's via natural selection. Okay, and the process of natural selection has got uh, what, five, roughly five uh, sequential steps. Okay, so I'll be uh, explaining them one by one in a bit more details, much more detailed than what the answer would be. Right? But uh, for those, this is really for those who don't really understand how the whole process happened, right, to uh, understand better so you can reproduce uh, the answers yourself next time, yeah? Okay, so let's talk about variation. What kind of variation are we talking about, right? The question is about the uh, evolution of the ability to modify cell membrane composition. Not evolution of the membrane, right? It's evolution of this ability to modify membrane composition. Okay, so the variation would therefore be the variation in the ability to modify membrane composition. Okay. Variations in the ability. The ability is a phenotype, right? We call your genetics, yeah? Ability to modify the membrane is a phenotype. So that's a phenotypic variation. Phenotypic variation is always due to genetic variation. Okay, and where do we get genetic variation? the ultimate source of genetic variation is mutations. Okay, so, so a lot of, some of you mentioned meiosis, la, sexual repro, la, right? random fusion of gametes. La. Yeah, all those give rise to genetic variation as well. Right? But those give rise to genetic variation only when there are different alleles. Right, so if there's no different alleles, if there's only one allele in the gene, then there's no such thing as a reshuffling of uh, alleles and all that, right? Huh. Which is uh, what happened in meiosis, okay? So how do we get different alleles? Mutations, right? So that's why ultimately the source of genetic variation is mutations, after which all the other processes will help to reshuffle all the alleles and give rise to even more genetic variation. Right? But you must have the different alleles first. So mutations is the ultimate source ah, of different alleles right? and genetic variation. However, right, in this context, we are talking about bacteria, right? So bacteria don't undergo meiosis, bacteria don't undergo sexual repro, bacteria don't undergo random fusion of uh, gametes, right? So for those who have written all this, uh, like uh, wrong context, yeah? Okay, so really just mutations. La. Of course you have learned uh, what all the transduction, uh, all the uh, transformation, uh, all those uh, conjugation. Uh, but those also spread the variation between individuals after mutations have occurred, right? Uh, you must have different alleles for the other processes to spread the alleles around, right? So still mutations is the ultimate source of uh, genetic variation uh, for bacteria. Okay, so what mutations are we really talking about, right? So in the context of the question, it's about variation in the ability to modify membrane composition, right? So the mutations that we are talking about here that create the genetic variation must be mutations in the gene that code for this ability. So when you have mutations in the gene, you have different versions of the genes, right? Which are alleles, right? So there would be there, therefore, different alleles coding for different abilities to modify the membrane composition. So that's how mutations give rise to the variation, right, in the ability to modify membrane composition right, between individuals. Okay. 
So some individuals have certain alleles that give them higher abilities. Others have alleles that give them lower abilities. Maybe some have uh, uh, alleles that do not give them any abilities to modify membrane composition. Right, so you have different levels of abilities between different individuals in the population. That is variation. Yeah. Then next is the sedative pressure. In the context of the question, it is mentioned there's uh, drastic temperature changes right in the Arctic. So that would be the sedative pressure. Okay, so it just say drastic temperature changes. It didn't say increase or decrease. So it can be large increase, it can be large decrease, it can be up and down, fluctuation. We don't know, right? Regardless, it is changes in temperature that will be the sedative pressure. How does that select for different individuals, right? So individuals with the higher ability right to modify the membrane composition right would be able to adjust or modify the membrane fluidity better right and obviously membrane fluidity helps the individuals to adapt to different temperatures okay so this is how the sedative pressure right will differentiate different individuals with different abilities to adjust their membrane. So therefore, different individuals have different likelihood to survive. Uh. So those with better abilities, higher abilities to adjust, modify their membrane according to the temperature will be more likely to survive. So therefore, right, these uh, individuals right, with better abilities to adjust the, mem the, mem the membrane will be able to survive, will be able to reproduce. And these are bacteria, right? So they reproduce by binary fission. So one parental cell gives rise to two daughter cells. And the two daughter cells will be genetically identical to the parent, right? So they will inherit the same alleles that give them the higher ability, right, to modify the membrane composition. Right? So this is passing down of the alleles. La. So you can imagine, right, in the daughter generation, right, after one generation, more individuals, more daughter cells will have the ability or we have you have the alleles, right, for higher ability to modify the membrane, right? So over time and over a few generations, the frequency of the alleles that give rise to higher abilities will be higher in the gene pool, but will increase in the gene pool. And that is the evolution, right? So if the allele frequency is higher, that also means right, there are just more individuals that have the alleles. So more individuals will have higher ability to modify their membrane composition. Oh, that's how the ability evolve, right? So this is the answer. Yeah.